everybody and welcome to another brand new edition of T Watches a Scary Movie. My name is T and of course we are talking scary movies. I appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget that I drop numerous reviews throughout the week and every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time I will be discussing movie news, I'll have an interview for you or I'll have an opinion piece for you to check out as well too. And the best way to stay on top of all the horror content that I'm dropping for you guys throughout the week is to get subscribed to my link tree. And you can do that by going to linktr.ee slash T scary movie. If you get subscribed to my link tree, that's going to give you access to the YouTube page. So you can see the video versions of the show to your favorite podcasting platforms for the audio only versions of the show to my letterbox page, for my written reviews and movie rankings throughout the year to my TikTok page, for my short horror content, including movie news and movie premieres to my Twitch page. Where you can catch my horror gaming and to my Fangoria shop page where you can enjoy my 20% off discount on anything in the Fangoria shop, including a yearly subscription to the physical magazine. So take advantage of that. Hit that subscribe button, folks, especially if you're watching on YouTube as the more followers I get, the more content that I'm going to be putting out for all of you. And you're going to want to get subscribed because remember this month here in the month of July, our next giveaway is going to be for this tall man Funko pop that I managed to secure one for all of you. And the easiest way to get entered is any of my July videos that are here on the YouTube page just go ahead and leave an answer to whatever question that I specifically put out to y'all in the month of July that's right every single video that I'm doing in the month of July I will have a carefully picked out question for all of you that are watching all you have to do is hit the comment section of YouTube answer that question that gets you an entry you can enter in every single video that I put out in the month of July one entry per video and then at the end of the month we're gonna do a raffle and see who wins the tall man funko pop so we'll see who gets it hit that subscribe button so what are we talking about here tonight folks well i hate that the time has finally come but here we are folks we have made it to the season two finale of interview with the vampire and folks i'm heartbroken because it has been a truly phenomenal season you know the word perfect doesn't get thrown around a lot because you have to be very very careful and very very specific when using that to describe work of, works of art and i honestly truly truly believe that after season two after catching last night's finale that season two of interview with the vampire and the show as a whole is truly perfect this is my favorite show on television right now it has captivated me for quite a while and i am so excited to see what we have in store here for louis armand lestat daniel whoever else is going to join up with this cadre of crazy vampires and humans running throughout this world but that's what we are talking about here tonight folks it is the season two finale of interview with the vampire and i'm gonna go ahead and start right off the jump here by giving some applause some kudos some big thanks to the entire cast and crew of this show y'all have put together something truly magnificent that has been a blast to watch week in and week out here for the last couple of months and of course for all of season one as well too saying that myself and so many others are beyond excited to see all the avenues that this show is going to go would be the understatement of the century so congratulations to everything you guys have accomplished with this show amc please 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 submit this wonderful show and everybody involved with it for some awards because they absolutely deserve that consideration please 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 but let's break into what's going on so last week's episode brought about a lot of heartache to us as the vampire troop the theater day vampire finally got a hold of Louis, Claudia, and their new fledgling Madeline. And unfortunately, it was time for them to stand trial for the crimes that they claim they committed against Lestat and against vampire nature in general. The idea that Claudia was too young to be turned as a vampire in the first place, that Madeline was turned without express permission from the local coven, and that they made an attempt on Lestat's 
life. Now, Lestat participated in the trial. Yes, that's right, Lestat is still alive. He survived the murder attempt by Claudia and Louis. So he participated as the key witness in this trial on them. And Armand was powerless and just had to sit back and watch as this sham, this show trial went on knowing what the outcome would be. Claudia and Madeline were killed. They were uh, immolated by the sun and Louis was given banishment to where he was buried alive under where the coven sleeps at to basically starve to death. This episode sets up the revenge tale of a lifetime because what can be done at this point? The coven is fully and firmly in control. Armand is again powerless to do anything to stop them because it's all of them, these 12 vampires versus him. What could he honestly do to save himself, to save Louis, to do anything? But it turns out that Armand apparently had some contingencies in place and found a way to free Louis. Now, before we get there, one of the more excellent effects of this episode was the fact that um, as Louis is describing his imprisonment, his banishment inside of this coffin, that he is able to do in a way that really, really drags that time out, that really, really makes it seem that it's longer than even what we're all perceiving it to be. And I love that writing. You know, I know that uh, Roland Jones wrote this episode and every single word that Louis is using to describe his delirium and the idea that in order to keep himself even somewhat sane, as sane as you can be in this situation, that he's replaying all these events in his head from his vampire life and his human life but he's like making these different choices he's basically changing his own past at that point to find some way to focus on anything else but the reality of the situation that he's in but unfortunately no matter how much he tries and practices that that he does have to get pulled back into the reality of the situation and that Claudia is dead, that he's played a role in that, that Lestat has played a role in that, and that this coven has damned him to hell. And this is what begins to drive Louis truly mad. And the idea that Armand, you know, reveals that to Louis, Louis didn't have the energy to do anything as he's slowly, slowly dying of starvation. But the fact, the reality, the admission that in, re that in truth, Louis was screaming, screaming various times, and he had no recollection, no idea that this was happening in the first place. And, you know, it, it's interesting to see the way they show that Armand is kind of being, not humbled, humbled's not the right word, but prostrated uh, in front of the rest of this coven, that he's basically found his place as the the, the underling of them all now, taking the, the job, taking the role that Claudia kind of had before she was unjustly killed by the rest of the coven as well, too. You know, Armand is definitely paying the price for helping and saving Louis's life during this trip trial and you know we we don't know how long this is going to go on for but somebody has to figure out something and of course it's Armand who finds a way to break him out and that Armand actually found a way to basically leave Louis his blood through this coffin to rip the coffin out of its tomb and slowly bring Louis back like drop by drop by drop. And as Louis is able to escape, this is really the first time that we get to see him as like this honest to God, true vampire. Because the thing about it is that ever since Lestat sired him, you know, he's been living still with all this humanity as a part of him. And yeah, Louis killed. We're not saying he hasn't killed and that he hasn't been a monster in places. We've seen it. And especially this season when it's come into his treatment at times of Claudia, of Armand, of uh, Lestat. Like we know that he has, though he can be a monster when he act absolutely needs to. But the flip of that though, is that he hasn't really been a honest to true vampire. Somebody killing indiscriminately 
constantly somebody terrifying who gives not a care to the consequences of their action and that's what a lot of this was that is louis is brought back from death because that's the way to look at it is that he was killed again in this banishment by losing claudia by losing madeline by losing his loves and being betrayed the way that he was he died again and so being brought back from death a death that he was honestly like he was like accepting at this point there he didn't think he was coming back he didn't think he'd have a chance at revenge or anything else but he gets brought back and is given the chance to get it takes not joy or pleasure in it honestly but it's methodical it is very very much the revenge thriller that you know we've gotten so many of over the last three or four decades at this point you know whether it's a john wick or a charles bronson it doesn't really matter ultimately it's a revenge thriller that you've seen before where louis morphs into this dark action hero who only motivation is to get some uh, resemblance of comeuppance on those who wronged him and wronged his family and he plots this out intricately about how he's going to punish the coven for their crimes and armand is begging for louis to leave because after everything that's happened louis has this chance to get away and live this life but if the coven finds out what happened, which they eventually un like undoubtedly will, not only is Louis in trouble, but Armand could be in trouble as well too. But we have to understand that Louis is very steadfast in what he's doing right now and that he's going to get his revenge. He's absolutely going to get his revenge. He's going to make it happen. And it, it comes swifter than you might think it would as well too. He's able to get in to where the coven sleeps he's able to torch the place and kill a grand majority of the vampires there in the actual theater itself and some do escape who presumably you know that santiago got away but louis louis in his revenge has taken all the precautions to make sure that he has all the information he could possibly need to drive this revenge even deeper and as much as santiago wants to taunt louis over claudia's death and everything that he witnessed and what they did afterwards you have to remember louis has already said at this point that he's a shell that the emotion is not there it's driven by rage so these insults that uh, santiago just continues to throw out just seem to go right through him and not having any hold at all whereas on the flip of it Louis has learned a lot of information about the way that Santiago was made and is using that to torment and torture him and embarrass him and bring this shame upon him, which ultimately leads to Santiago's death. And what I found so interesting about that was that I think that as a whole, us as the viewers who have been watching this season of the show, we've been waiting for Santiago to get his, his, his just due, to get that come up and to get that swift hit in the face, however it comes for everything that he's done and for what he's set up for all these evil plans that he's put into place. And as Louis kills him, kind of the way that revenge works out, I almost feel that we didn't really get a catharsis from it either. That we didn't weren't really able to breathe from that at all. That that Santiago and this troop did this unspeakable thing and that even though Louis got this got this revenge, he got exactly what he wanted out of it that we're left just as empty as Louis ultimately is. That really honestly uh, uh that, that really honestly got to me. That that really really did. And so after this is all said and done, Louis taken his revenge. He's hunted down all but one of the vampires as Sam, who we know was guarding Armand, possibly. Sam was our only person to escape from Louis's revenge. And so Armand then takes Louis to meet up with Lestat to where we have to assume again, the revenge will continue on from there. And rather than kill Lestat because Lestat makes it very clear that he can't because he's filled with the blood of Magnus and name drop Akasha that's right folks the queen of the dam gets that name drop Ooh, that was a good feeling that was such a good feeling Akasha baby yeah yeah um but Lestat tells Louis and reveals a key piece of information that apparently due to like the way that Lestat's blood works he can't really be killed unless 
He wants to be killed. And so Louis instead inter, like, enacts his revenge by stating that he's going to live the rest of his life with Armand, that they're going to be in love and spend their lives together. And you know, at, at, at first, like it might seem like it's a bit like, it's a bit underwhelming. To, for what Louis gives Lestat, that there should be some kind of physical retribution. But we also have to understand that as unreliable as a narrator as Louis has been, we've seen in the past the actions that Lestat and Louis have taken against each other, that Louis described a lot to us that happened in season one that wasn't the actual reality of the situation and that he was in some cases just as abusive as Lestat was. So. The physicality doesn't really work anymore, and instead he finds a way to hurt Lestat in the only way he can, by choosing someone else. And that ends the interview. The interview is done, and it's crazy to think that this show that was very much based around this is no longer really going to be based around this part, that this monumental drive of Interview with the Vampire has now finished up. and. That's such a confusing feeling to have because the show is nowhere near being done, obviously. And the cherry on top has been this power struggle throughout all of it, whether it's between Louis and Daniel, Louis and Armand, Armand and Daniel, like it, it hasn't mattered who it's been. There's been a consistent power struggle in Dubai over the course of this interview. And Daniel, of course, can't let things in without some huge revelations. We are talking game-changing revelations. And I'm going to give all the credit in the world here to uh, Sahir18, who, when I dropped last week's review, pointed out something very, very important about it that he didn't think that Lestat was in his right mind um, and seemed out of it, and that... Armand had some more explaining to do and I'm going to give you all the credit in the world for that because Daniel drops the bomb that he goes over a few questions like considering the placement of certain people from like season one and season two which ultimately leads to the revelation that the Telemasca has given Daniel the script of the play of the trial and it shows very much that Armand was running the show and directing things and directly responsible for Claudia and Madeline's death and Louis's banishment and torture. I feel played. I feel played with this show because this entire season has been just over and over and over and over situations and cases of our mind like being portrayed as truthful and then we find out something else and then the rug gets swept out from us yet again and we keep getting to these places to where we trust Armand and we want to like Armand and we want to root for Armand and then something else happens that just wrecks everything and this bombshell is truly unforgivable because for the longest time you know louis and armand's like issues and their strife was over the role that he played in it but the role that louis perceived was that he set them up and that from there he was powerless to do anything else when in reality armand purposely set them up and then push through everything else that happened as well too. Everything has been built on this massive relationship ending lie. And Louis, who has finally found out this truth, has finally moved on from it. And that in itself is a big revelation because over the course of the show, whether it's Lestat or whether it's been Armand, it's been a consistent consistent pattern of abuse honestly to where whether it's been Lestat whether it's been Armand Louis has been hoodwinked he's been lied to he's been beaten he's been abused over and over and over and he keeps going back just like the way a lot of abusive relationships work but a lot of times it's been under information that he didn't truly have and now that he finally has all the information that he needs his kid was killed Lestat's kid was killed he's done and Louis has ended it with Armand. And it was satisfying to see that Louis is 
finally been able to truly stand up, not just for himself, but for all the pain that Claudia was put through as well too. And this keeps us now that we're done with the interviews, we're done with the past. Lestat, or excuse me, Louis jets off to New Orleans where he gets to visit his old, his old haunts and hear some of his old stories told by somebody conducting a tour that eventually leads him to the reunion that's been in the making for a while of him and Lestat. And it cannot be understated that this is the first time that we're encountering Lestat when it's not somebody telling us a story. Throughout this entire show thus far, it's either been from the words of Louis, from, da uh, from Armand, and in some cases from Daniel. But we've never actually seen Lestat in present day to see who he actually is. And the Lestat that we see in present day is so much different from the Lestat that we've spent all this time with over the past few years at this point. He's kinder, he's opener, he's open, he's gentle. There is a, a bit of a warmth coming from him. The fact that the like the moment him and Louis start to interact, there is this pool between them. And make no mistake, we know that Lestat, uh, Lestat was abusive. And we know that yes, Louis was not truthful about a lot of the recounting of the relationship. It doesn't mean that it was always this positive one. And Lestat did take liberties with Louis that are unforgivable in a lot of cases. But getting to see the real Lestat and that he opens up to Louis about his pain of losing Claudia, the pain of losing his daughter was heartbreaking. It was truly heartbreaking and beautiful to see. And Sam Reed had the absolute performance of a lifetime against Jacob Anderson. These two had so much power between them and getting to see the reconciliation and getting to see that finally the two of them can be on good terms and not even in a relationship, but that a true honest to God kinship, a friendship, you know, an actual companionship seemed to have been actually made from the pain of their past from their wounds finally being healed from decades and decades and decades of so many so many terrible things happening um it that was the catharsis that we need the theater was not it it was truly the reconciliation between lestat and louis and it was amazing it was absolutely amazing and don't think that we miss Lestat dropping that gym that he's about to go on tour because that is the focus of season three of interview with the vampire and with Daniel having published the memoir of Louis and it be being taken mostly as fiction vampires are mad at Daniel who is now turned by the way, Armand has turned Daniel into a vampire, but Daniel still seems to be aligned with the Talamasca, and he still seems to be in allegiance to Louis as well, too. So we don't know where that's going, but we have to imagine that season three is going to very much focus on maybe Daniel following around Lestat on tour and we get a bit of an almost famous kind of season that would be pretty amazing folks this has been a fantastic season of interview with the vampire getting to finish things off by louis making this proclamation to all these vampires who were threatened by daniel's book that if they have an issue to come and find him is gold it's absolute gold y'all this has been such an amazing show and the fact that we're getting more of an expansion with the new telemasca series season three will likely be to us no early than fall next year but more than likely i'm reckoning 2026 honestly this world is still building so i want to know in the comment section who do you hate more between Armand and Lestat. And I know we're forgiving Lestat now, or we're at least on better terms with Lestat because of this reconcile, reconciliation he's had with Louis. But who do we wait, hate more for their actions in the past? Lestat or Armand? Let me know in that comment section, y'all. Um, but that's it. This has been an amazing season. I truly, truly hope that AMC submits these guys, submits this cast, submits this crew for some awards consideration because they absolutely deserve it. So stay tuned, y'all, because again, we are going to start going over the Mayfair Witches here in a few weeks. We're going to start working our way through that so we can have the full scope of the Immortal Universe. And as always, I have more great reviews coming your way. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this review here. I got more coming for you. My name is T. We've been talking 
talking scary movies. Stay scared. Boy here is a big fan of Fangoria. So if you want to check out the world's best horror magazine that's out there, get a chance to get yourself your own subscription, which I just got my first one back in 2022, and I don't regret it for a second. But if you want your own Fangoria subscription or you like the Fangoria merchandise, then head over to the Fangoria shop and use my link if you want to save yourself some money, folks. That's an easy one to remember. Just go to shop.fangoria.com slash A-X-D-E-W. Again, that's shop.fangoria.com Angoria.com slash AXDEW or use my specific code AXDEW at checkout. You can save 20% off your entire order and that implies two a subscription and the one-time orders as well. You don't want to miss out folks because with the magnitude of horror movies we've had released in the last few years and with what we have on the horizon, Fangoria is going to be your number one source for all that great juicy bloody information in the world of horror. So again, head to shop.fangoria.com. Hey there folks, thanks for tuning in to T-Watch This Scary Movie. I appreciate you checking out another review or movie news, whether we're talking movies, TV shows, books, or games, whatever, it's all scary. Remember, you can check out new episodes every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on the YouTube page for video. That's youtube.com slash C slash Theron Reynolds Scary Movie. Again, youtube.com slash C slash Theron Reynolds Scary Movie. And you can check out the audio version on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Just search T Watch the Scary Movie or Twaza. Don't forget, my name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared.